Hi everyone, this is Dr. R. Chitra, Professor from Information Technology Department from K.S. Rangasamy College of Technology. I am going to explain today about the Basic Processing Unit and I.O. Organization. So, for, for executing any instructions, you need to have any uh, different sort of instructions. First, we let us see about load instructions. So, load instructions will be of the form load followed by the name of the register and from where the data is to be stored. For example, here this load R5, X, R7 represents. So, the content of R7 and the uh, content of X uh, is the destination and um, you need to save that content over to the uh, register R5. So, the, what are all the actions that are being followed here is that fetch the instruction from the memory, increment the program counter and decode the instruction to determine the operation to be performed and feed the register R7 and add the immediate value X into the current content of R7 and use that computed value that, uh, you, that represents the effective address so that that can be used to save over a location R5. Next one is the arithmetic and logic instruction. So this uh, arithmetic and in logical instructions involve the arithmetic operations such as add, subtract and all. There are two source registers R, uh, um, R1 uh, regi source registers and an immediate operand and here this arithmetic and logical instruction no need to perform a memory an operation. Next one is the arithmetic instructions. A typical instruction of this type will be of the form add R3, R4, R5. It requires the following steps. Fetch the instruction and increment the program counter. Decode the instruction and read the content of the source registers R4 and R5 and compute the sum R4 and R5. Load the result into the destination register. Next one is the store instruction. The first uh, five step sequence used for the load and store instructions, uh, particularly load and add instructions is applicable for the store instruction also, except the final step. Here, the hardware stage responsible for this step take in, takes no action. So, this store instruction Rx, X, R8 stores the content of the register R6 into the register R8. So, the actions that is followed in the store instructions can be fetch the instruction and increment the program counter, decode the instruction and read the register R6 and R8, compute the effective address X plus the content of R8 and store the content into the register uh, from the register R6 into the memory location. Next, coming to this hardware component. So, there are different hardware components we need to use for executing any sort of instruction. First one is the register file. So, the register file normally will be having of three inputs normally through the ports A and B. And the port, the access security is designed to enable the two registers to be read at the same time, making the contents which are available to be two separate outputs namely A and B. And it will be using the appropriate addresses to read that content from that of the register file. And apart from that, you will be using one more uh, port called as a port C. So, this uh, data uh, can be taken as a data input and the corresponding address input can be used to select the register in which the data are to be written. So, this address input is connected to that of the field and specifies the destination instruction uh, registers of the instructions. Then coming to this hardware component, so if you look into this diagram, you have a clear cut idea that you have a three input like address A, address B and address C and apart from that whatever the data that is available over this register file will be available over this port A, B and the input will be given to C. Next one is arithmetic logical unit. Arithmetic logical unit is used to manipulate the data. It performs the arithmetic operations such as additions and subtractions and logical operations such as AND and OR and XR. Conceptually, the register file and the ALU may be connected. And when the instruction performs arithmetic logical operation is being executed, the contents of the registers are being fetched and it is being uh, manipulated over an arithmetic unit. 
so the output of this arithmetic logical unit is correctly directly connected to that of the input of the arithmetic logic uh, unit and the input a and b is connected to the multiplexer so the multiplexer selects the appropriate output from b uh, of the register file and the immediate value in that uh, in instruction register to be connected to that of the arithmetic logical unit so if you look into this diagram so the output of this register file from a is directly connected to that of the arithmetic unit and uh, the um, uh, output from b is connected to multiplexer whether it takes the input from the register file or from the in intermediate operand from that uh, the arithmetic logical unit will be capable of performing the arithmetic operations so the output from this arithmetic logical unit is fed to the input uh, port to this register file named c and since uh, instructions uh, to be executed will be following at uh, different stages um instruction processing consists of two phases so the fetch and the execution phase it is convenient to divide the processor hardware into two corresponding sections one section uh, fetches the instruction and the other executes them this section fetches the instruction is also responsible for decoding them and for generating the control signals that can be appropriate take uh, take part in uh, maybe in taking part of executing an instruction so look coming to this diagram so you have a different sort of uh, uh, stages of instructions like stage 1 2 3 4 and 5 and first instructions will be the instruction execution uh, of, uh, that is from the fetching and then decoding it and then executing it and and forwarding that instruction to the perform that appropriate functionality so instruction is fetched in step 1 by the hardware stage 1 and it is placed in, in instruction register it is decoded and the source registers are set up to this to the as a read in the step 2 the information in the instruction register is used to generate the control signals for all subsequent steps therefore the instruction register must continue to hold the instruction until an execution is completed it is necessary to insert certain additional registers in between the successive stages of manipulation of instruction execution so there comes the need for the additional registers like ra rb rz so the, which are then uh, inserted in between the different stages of this uh, instruction executed so the purpose of this register is to forward that uh, content to that of the successive registers so next comes the instruction fetch section so instruction fetch consists of uh, a certain sort of circuitry so that is responsible for uh, fetching that instructions or uh, data from uh, uh, memory and placing it to the instruction registers and apart from that whenever an instruction is being fetched so program counter will be incremented to recommend that next instruction from where that data or instruction is to be fetched for execution and based on that data either the uh, next successive instructions or the data is to be fetched and it will be manipulated by the arithmetic logical uh, unit and next section comes the card con uh, wired control so this is the one of the uh, mechanism for generating the control signals so apart from that you have one more section uh, called micro programmed control in hardware control hardware control you have a instruction uh, register so which is capable of decoding that uh, uh okay, fetching that instructions and placing it over it in uh, instruction register and the decoding circuitry is responsible for uh, performing the operations and apart from that will be having a clock signals so that represents from at, at what point that signals are to be generated and uh, uh, based on that external input and the at different stages the in i mean uh, the control signals are being generated and these signals can be used to control the operation of execution by an arithmetic logical unit so if you are using this uh, hardware component of a processor for generating a uh, control signals so these sort of signals will be calling it as a hardware control signal generations so here the control signal generator is a combinational circuit so that produces the necessary control signals based on the input which is being generated by that Uh, decoder and uh, next comes the micro programmed control so micro programmed control is nothing but another scheme for generating a uh, control signals here 
This hardware control signal generates the circuits, uses the circuits for generating the signals. Whereas in microprogrammed control, you will not be using this uh, uh, operations like uh, um, hardware control where you will be writing a routine. So, microprograms. So, these microprograms will be stored in the processors and uh, that can be fetched into the memory called micro uh, program memory. And whenever this program is being executed, so the um, control signals are being generated. So, this diagram, if you look into this, represents the circuitry. So, where it will be supporting for generating the micro uh, mean, uh, control signals. So, it consists of micro routines, uh, address generator, which generates address to be used for reading the micro instructions from the control store. The address generator uses a micro program counter, micro program to keep track of the control ad store address when reading the micro routines from the successive locations. During the step 2, the micro instructions address the generator decodes instruction into the um, list to contain the set of micro, uh, I mean, uh, the control signals. As instruction executes and proceeds, the micro in, uh, instructions address the generator increment to increment the micro program controller whereby you are able to generate a control signal. Next comes the bus operation. So, this bus is nothing but a set of rules that often uses a bus protocol that govern how the bus is used by various devices. So, the bus determines when a device may be placed information on a bus and when it may load the data onto the bus into which one of its registers and, and so on. These rules are, can be applicable for any sort of input or devices that may interact with that of a memory. And bus operations. So, normally you will be using this uh, read and write uh, control line. So, where uh, you will be using this um, uh, read and write operations to be performed. As the label suggests, it specifies the read when it is set to a 1 and write when it is set to a 0. When bus operations, the, a variety of schemes have been devised for timing of data or transfer over a bus. So, they can be classified as synchronous and asynchronous schemes. And in any data transfer operation, one device plays the role of a master. This is a device that initiates the data transfer by issuing a read and write commands to the bus. So, on a synchronous bus, all devices derive the timing information from a control line called the bus clock. The signal on this line has two phases, a high level followed by a low level. Two phases constitute a clock cycle and here this bus cycle will generate a timing sequence and whatever the data that is being forwarded from that um, a source will be available to that of a destination at the successive clock. And, uh, and the crossing points indicates the time at which this, these patterns change. A sign lab, uh, line at a level halfway between the low and high level signals indicates the period during which the signal is being generated. Let us consider the sequence of signal events during an input operation. At time t2, t0, the master places the device address on the address lines and sends the command onto the control lines indicating a read operation. The command also specifies the length of the operand to be read and information travels over the bus at a speed determined by its physical and electromagnetic characteristics. And it also must be long enough to allow all the device to decode the address and control the signal so that the address device cannot respond at time t1 by placing the request input data to the data lines. At the end of the clock cycle at the time t2, the master loads the data onto the data lines to one of its registers. So, this can be represented by means of uh, this uh, uh, successive uh, diagram like you have a master where you will be placing this uh, uh, clock signals and apart from that you will be having a um, slaves. So, these slaves will be representing a set of uh, uh, signals that slaves will be getting this uh, data and at the successive time. An alternative scheme for controlling a data transfer or, uh, um, uh, over a bus is based on the use of an ANSI.